Hello to all of you. Mobile technologies can be a huge help to healthcare, from remote monitoring so people can stay active at home, to simple mobile apps like devices like this to take control, to teleconsultations or even telesurgery. The possibilities are endless, and in many cases the solutions are already out there. They are already being used by both patients, professionals, and often in fact developed right here in Europe. The market is getting ready for this revolution. For business or pleasure, Europeans can't get enough of smartphones, tablets and apps. The EU app economy is already worth 17.5 billion euros and 1.8 million jobs. And that's set to tra travel within a few years with European app developers leading the world. Those apps aren't just about chatting or playing games. They also support a range of socially important services, including health and well-being. By the end of this year, 231 million individuals worldwide will have downloaded health and fitness apps, with revenues expected to reach over 100 million euros globally this year, of which over one euro in five is from Western Europe alone. We need to take advantage of those great changes, because they can benefit us all. As populations get older, our healthcare systems risk becoming unsustainable. But new technology can save them. M-Health could be the future of healthcare, with patient data easily accessible to professionals for better diagnosis and continuity of care. It's also good for citizens helping people prevent conditions before they occur, while keeping patients in control of their care and in control of their data. There is such a huge range of apps out there. In fact, 70% of mHealth apps look at wellness and fitness, like the Swedish Shape Up Club app, offering a food and exercise diary and a personalized plan for losing weight and keeping a healthy lifestyle. Plus, apps and devices can also help if a person is sick. For example, for those living with chronic conditions like diabetes or, a her uh, or heart problems. And they can help inclusion for people with disabilities like crowdsourced maps showing which buildings or transport are accessible. And again, though those apps are not universally positive. Some so-called health apps do little more than peddle unproven myths that may be unhelpful, if not harmful, for health. The EU is already investing in research and innovation in this area. But how can we ensure the most benefit from those new technology? In March we will launch this debate with a green paper on mHealth to get views on the key issues that matter, like data protection, how can we have apps that comply with privacy and data protection laws without, for example, preventing the big data innovations that could develop new drugs? Like patient safety, how can we ensure that people, patients and professionals can choose from among the huge variety of an offer and find a reliable, performing app that won't put their health at risk? Like legal clarity, is the current framework for mHealth adequate and clear? Are there elements that might need to be changed or resought? And finally, like web entrepreneurship, the many innovative European web startups out there give me a lot of hope. They are creating ideas and creating jobs. But do they face barriers in accessing the mHealth market? And how can we raise their awareness about this huge potential? That consultation should open in late March and will be open for 12 weeks. I hope that in that period we get views on those and other questions from a wide range of stakeholders. Telco companies, ICT companies, entrepreneurs, app developers, healthcare providers and professionals and citizens, consumers and more. Giving us useful input on the way forward for European M health. But there's one thing mHealth services are really crying out for. Fast, reliable broadband networks. In fact, our entire economy is crying out for them too. Today, Europe suffers from not enough broadband, patchy reception 
and poor connections. And today, using your favorite apps abroad could cost you a fortune in roaming fees. Fixing those problems is the aim of our proposals to make Europe a connected continent. And I hope that the members of parliament and national ministers can agree them soon. To take just one example, our proposed safeguards for the open internet would mean telco providers could no longer just decide to block or to throttle new health apps or services. While they would also open the door to the higher quality, specialized services that may be essential for health applications. So providers can guarantee high quality connections end to end. The connections that new healthcare innovations may depend on. So let's be clear. Improving our telco framework is not just about the telco sector. It's not just about the tech sector either. It's about every sector of our economy, every aspect of our world. And that matters, especially for fast-growing and socially essential sectors like healthcare. To conclude, mHealth is an exciting and promising field. And we all stand to benefit governments, medics, entrepreneurs and our economy and every citizen, from those who want to stay healthy, to those who want to become healthy again, and those who want to continue leading normal, independent lives as they do so. And that's just one of the benefits of a connected continent. Thank you.